Hi. Hi. Um, I want to make sure I, I get this right. So Chris, Chris is the first Bucks player with 20 points in a fourth quarter in a playoff game over the last 25 years. And the only other Bucks player with 20 points in any playoff quarter was also Chris. What, what is it like? Say so, so that, so that again. He's the, he's the first player. In the, so he's the first Bucks player with 20 points in a fourth quarter over the last 25, season, 25 seasons. And the only other Bucks player to ever have 20 points in any quarter of a playoffs is also Chris. Greatness. Greatness. What I saw that there was unreal. It was freaking unbelievable. Carried the team at the end. Uh, man, and just, you know, being able to, like, he turned the ball over, like, two times. And after that, he was, like, locked in. He was, like, pass me the ball. And... Uh, we were giving the ball, you know, and uh, I've talked in the past that there's moments that, you know, we know when to set screens for him. We know when he wants the ball, and that was the moment. We were like, get the hell out of the way, give him the ball, take us home, Chris, and uh, that's what he did. And uh, as I said, you know, I talked to him a little bit in the locker room. You know, what I saw today was unbelievable, and for me it was greatness, similar as that. Eric asked Bobby about the fact that Chris isn't necessarily known for being the most athletic player. And Bobby immediately jumped in and said, well, at the combine, you can measure jumping, you can measure speed, you can measure all these things. One thing you can't measure is heart. And he has the most of that. I'm wondering at what point you've kind of seen that evolve and change in the work that Chris puts in day in, day out to result in this. I think throughout the whole journey of being with him for eight years, you know, from the start, like obviously we're young, Try to figure it out, but you know, once we started to figure it out, that showed that he was like, it's tough, you know, and uh, he's going to give everything for the team um, every given night, uh, every time he steps on the floor, no matter if he plays well, no matter if he doesn't play well, he's always there, he's always giving everything for the team, and uh, that's a lot, that's a lot. Thank you. A couple of years ago, you had told me a story of like when you two were both fighting for playoffs like for playing time at the start of your career, you're both playing, you have scratches all over your arms. Like, what does it mean for you that that dude is still with you and he's the one that's closing playoff games? Uh, it, it's, it's an unbelievable journey, you know, and uh, it was crazy. Uh, it's crazy. We were talking about maybe like, I don't know, maybe like a few days ago, four days ago, five days ago, we were in the locker room and, uh, we're talking about like, how long are you gonna play for? You know, we just had a silly conversation and he like, I'm not gonna say exactly what he said, but like I told him, I said, hey, the day you retire, is gonna be the toughest day in my career. Because like, I've been with you the whole time and uh, it's been an unbelievable journey. It's great seeing this guy, man, uh, where we started, where we are, where he started, where he is right now. I just said closing games, uh, and uh, that's what we need from Chris. We need him to, you know, be aggressive. We need him to uh, take in over games, make good decisions, and um, play off him. The other day, he had said he had never seen you make that little up and under finger roll in a one-on-one -on -one setting. What it's like you... I'm just. <laughs> what have you seen from him in a one-on-one -on -one setting? Like, what is it like if you two are playing one-on-one? -on -one? Like, is it the same thing right there? Uh, uh, what you mean? The same thing that? Hell no. No, I'm joking. But uh, uh, one thing that, like, I was like, it was strange to me, like, today that I saw from him. Like, we got the rebound, and Drew was in the right side of the floor. I was in the middle, and he was, like, in the left corner, right? He was, like, you know, begging for the ball. And I'm looking, and I'm like, he's not open, you know? But like he took the ball, Drew took the ball, swing it, I think, to Pat or somebody, and they swing it to Chris. And Chris, like, pound fake, tried to drive the ball, did not drive the ball, came to the three point line, took a step to the corner, like almost like behind the backboard, cash it. You know, like that's, that's greatness to me, you know? And uh, like we've done that when we play one on one a lot of times. and. Uh, I think uh, one thing that over the time that he got better, especially against me, is that he learned how to like use his body and his shoulders and his uh, stops to like shoot over me. He's he's really elite in that. How mad are you when he gets one over the top? I feel like I'm, not many. I'm mad as hell. <laughs> you know, because like he's one of those players that you play great defense and uh, 
you're right there and you're like, okay, I got it. I got him. He, he can go nowhere. And all of a sudden, he's just rainbow shot over the top of you, cash. You know, but he's he's special for a reason, and um, he showed it tonight. Be honest. Um, aside from the physical stuff and putting in the work, what is your know, buddy even mentioned like sort of the composure? And how have you seen that maybe grow from you know, where you get four fouls after three quarters? And he, he admitted he's like, I didn't like those calls. Maybe get a little frustrated, but then turns it around. Where is that part of experience of in terms of Chris? Just like learning. I'm not getting calls. Maybe I shouldn't get called. But then able to kind of block that out, put it aside, and not let it linger to the end of the game. You know, his days are kind of fans, you know, and um, no matter what goes on in the first quarter, first half, whatever the case might be, you got to let it go. You got to keep playing the game. You know, you got to do whatever it takes to win the game. Um, and if you get called by silly fouls, or if you turn the ball over, or if you make wrong decision, you got to keep playing. Uh, because um, that's what the team wants us to do, you know, to keep playing and figure out the way uh, to put ourselves in a position to win the game. But I think um, he played great throughout the fouls. Um, I don't remember the fouls. I don't know. Finished with what? Uh, four, uh, four, four, four. What the fouls that? He had four in the third. Oh, the yeah, right. He had four. So uh, I think he did great. He played. He played great. Played throughout the through the fouls and uh, it was good. Uh, early in the game, you guys are down 15, and Bud said that you're in the huddle saying, hey, it's one stop at a time, build it one stop at a time. You mentioned your leadership. I know you've talked about finding the times to be vocal. Um, I guess you speak to that today and what that meant. When did you feel like, okay, they need to hear from me so we can get back in this? No, um, uh, like I'm a guy. I lead by example, and um, I don't talk a lot, but I talk, I talk specific, you know. And, and uh, at that moment, you know, when I see heads down and um, that the game might be going away, I try to remind guys one stop at a time, one position at a time, you know. And uh, in that way, we can put ourselves in a position. Like that doesn't mean we're going to win the game, but the mindset changed now. Instead of like, okay. Uh, they're up 15, they're hitting all the threes, uh, we, can, we can stop them, whatever the case might be. Let's uh, focus on one stop, one possession at a time. And there's moments, you know, that I feel that I have to, you know, say that, you know. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, um, like, it's not that I feel like I'm the leader of the team after before. I, I doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. You know, the other guys vocal, DJ is vocal, Chris is vocal. Drew is vocal, but I'm, uh, I try to, uh, as I said, not talk a lot, but talk specific. You know, be specific with my words and uh, try to throw them out there in the right time because I think it means more to uh, the people that try to listen to you. Yeah, you ended up on the um, injury, injury report today. What's, what's going on? I hurt my pinky. No. Uh, no, no. I'm, I was good. You know, I was just a little bit sore, uh, banged up from uh, game two. That's pretty much it. Um, I was good. And uh, hopefully, you know, I get some uh, rest tomorrow and uh, get ready for game four. When, um, when, when the Nets, well, they, I mean, they start out, they had Kyrie, they had Kenny who's coming back, and then they traded for Kenny. The whole league was talking about how that's a super team. This is their year. Um, how hard was that? I, I didn't focus on that. I'm not on social media, so I didn't know what they were talking about. First of all, I didn't know the trade happened, you know. So I, I you know, I went to the locker room, locker room talk. Guys, said, oh, do you saw James Harden went to the net? So I tried to stay away from that. Obviously, I knew they, they're going to be a very, very tough team to beat. And um, one guy, two guys can do it. We got to do it as a team, and that's what we did. Uh, it was a tough series, and uh, but uh, we played great basketball. We were able to. Uh, and fast, but uh, now we just got to focus on one game at a time. Like game four, it's, it's a big game. It's a big game for us and uh, and also for the Hawks. Uh, but we got to do what we do. We got to keep playing good basketball, keep helping one another, keep finding each other on uh, offense. And uh, if we make it to the finals, we make it to the finals. But like 
the kind of folks who came for that's I don't care about the finals. I don't care about the end of the finals. I don't care about the summit of the finals. What I care about is game four, you know, and um, that's the message to the whole team. You got to take it possession at a time, uh, game at a time, and um, just enjoy the game, and we're going to be in a good place. How important is trust in your relationship with Chris, considering the fourth quarter, that could usually be your time. You could and how important do you trust that you give him the space to be that for you? Nah, I, I, trust, I trust this guy to death. And uh, if he wants to go, he gets it. Simple as that. He was knocking down shots. You know, it doesn't really matter um, who is the first guy. It does not matter. We play basketball. You know, we try to win games. And if uh, Bobby can come in and help us win a game, I'll take that every day. You know, you know I want to I be a winner. And... Uh, I have I have the whole game to be you know the guy. I don't care about being the guy in the fourth quarter. Whoever wants to be the guy in the fourth quarter, and uh, or Chris or Drew, or PJ or Bobby or Brino, or whoever the case might be, and help us win game. That's what I I care about, you know. So yeah, but I trust Chris to death. If Chris asks for the ball, better give him the ball. What we got. Uh, Trey injured his ankle. Uh, in the he did. Quarter. Yeah, and he has to get an MRI uh, tomorrow. How do you think that changed their offense down the stretch? Because defensively, I think you held them to three baskets in the last seven minutes. So uh, I didn't see him. He backed up and stepped on the referee's foot and rolled his ankle. Had to go to the locker room, came back. Well, I, didn't, I wish him a healthy recovery. Hopefully, he's ready for game four. Uh, big vocal point in their offense. Uh, so yeah, as I said, I wish him, I wish him the best. I hope he can uh, be able to compete at Game Four. Uh, but yeah, the the Hawks definitely need him. You know, uh, as I said, he's, he's a big part of what they do, and he's, a, he's tough. He's tough to guard. So, so yeah. So what was working for your defense late though? What was working? Really helped them. Yeah. Um, switching, keeping guys in front, making them make a play. You know, uh, do not let them to go, do not let them go downhill, uh, and just making them make tough shots. Like as you see, um, uh, Herder, um, Young, Bogey, all those guys. Like they were trying to make tough shots over, like playing one on one, make tough shots over the length. You know, so that's what we we want, and uh, we we're able to get that in the last uh, five minutes. Uh, and we were able to rebound the ball as well better today. So that, that's why we were in a good spot and we won the game. Giannis, you know Chris Middleton better than just about anybody on the planet. Why do you think 38 NBA general managers essentially missed on this guy and he waited to the 39th pick? to be chosen in the second round of the draft? What didn't they see? I don't know, man. that's a tough question. I'm not a GM, so, you know, I can, I can answer that question. I'm really good at uh, identifying uh, talent, like finding talent, but uh, in that case, you know, obviously they, they, they made a mistake. This guy's a two-time all-star, uh, leading his team to, uh, uh, through the Isaac Harris finals. Uh, great player, being always every night is always there. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy that uh, he's on my team, uh, and uh, 38 GM missed out on him. What is there inside that guy that you can't measure in a combine? Uh, Bobby said it. I think he said it best. His heart, his heart is always there. Like he's always there no matter if he's hurting no matter if he's not feeling well no matter if he's not playing well he's always there and uh that says a lot thanks guys thank you, thank thank you guys, guys. Uh,